Hello, everybody! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, so many familiar faces. Who's been to some panels at HQ this year already? Yes! Who's had their first HQ panel ever? All right. I love your Wolverine chops, sir. This man is styling. How long did it take to grow that out? Don't tell me. Don't ruin the surprise. Don't tell me. Uh, who's excited for a Stupid Buddy studio panel? Yes, you are. You guys can keep loading in. Uh, volunteers, you can keep loading in as I talk. Um, uh, uh, is there flash photography allowed at this panel? No. no. Is there video allowed at this panel? No, very good. You're all very well trained. Uh, hey, you guys raised about $5,000 for Operation Smile with this panel, so give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> that happened. Uh, well, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Without further ado, please welcome to the stage, in no particular but this particular order, Seth Green, Matthew Sanreich, John Harvatine, Eric Towner, and Tom Root. <laughs> Go sit down. Go! Keep it going, folks. Keep it going. Uh-oh. What's up, people? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nerd HQ 2014. Uh -oh. oh, my gosh. We're doing it again, aren't we? This is totally happening. <laughs> What's up, people? Are you guys happy to be here? This is a this is a really good looking group. <laughs> so handsome, all of you guys. Nice. Um, so so we're awkward. We don't know what to talk about ever. We, we don't do like it. format structure. No, never. It's not really our we way. We don't like to prepare. I think. I think no, we have plenty of. We're really we, lazy we, and unprepared. Is basically. No, 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 no. We've prepared quite quite an assortment of things for you guys to experience. There's stuff out there where you can see what we do in our studio. There's plenty of clips and things that we've got here, but. You know, the whole point of Nerd HQ is to have a more informal, less Hall H experience where everybody just gets to hang out, sort of say what they want, high five each other in an intimate way. It's like if Led Zeppelin played McCabe's. Does anybody, does that reference mean anything to anyone at this con? It's like if, if Justin Bieber played 7 Eleven. That's a good reference. That's pretty good. That's good. Uh, well done. Yo, I keep current. I know what's up. So to start out our panel, for anybody who's a fan of Robot Chicken, we have a character called Bitch Pudding. Oh, you guys, right. you guys know about the Bitch Pudding? So, so this Sunday we are actually debuting a, uh, an episode devoted to her, and we brought this little sneak preview of... Everybody said, oh, more Bitch Pudding, more Bitch Pudding, and we were like, yeah, you know, in, in, a, in an episode of Robot, how long can... We've already made it very long, and then everyone's like, give her her own show. We're like... <laughs> You, right. you literally asked for it, so. <laughs> so that said, I don't know how to cue it, but I think we're going to show I think what we would do trail. is dim the central lights and then. Oh, wow, nice job. Thank you. Roll the bitch pudding clip. Now hit my f***ing theme song. So, you know, uh, Bitch Pudding is played by uh, the incomparable Katie Sackhoff. You guys, you guys ever heard of her? Um, and then it's actually got a hilariously star-studded cast from uh, Kate Mara and Billy Bob Thornton to Maisie Billy Dee Williams and Maisie, Maisie Williams, Williams <laughs> who are not related, weirdly enough. <laughs> Billy Dee and Maisie, I don't even think they've ever met. Um, so with that, we'd like to open it up to you guys. Questions. Guys, we like questions. Oh, somebody's already got a microphone. Did you bring your own mic? Are you like Michael Winslow? <laughs> <laughs> this is a good effort, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Robot Chicken's really funny, of course. And Thanks, man. No problem. When you guys are coming up with your ideas, do you, like, take them home and do homework? Or do you, like... There's this group. thing called it's Wikipedia. Not a, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of homework at Robot Chicken. Uh, 
there's definitely a lot of like on-site scramble effort getting it all done but when, when we're writing it it's a free-for-all like tom you could probably talk more to the writing yeah we there's there's been some uh cycles of, we write it uh, four episodes at a time there's been a few cycles where we've gotten to a friday and we've been told hey why don't you guys work on saturday and sunday because uh, this week's been terrible. Wait, uh, to be cl to be clear, Root, who who says that to you? Who's your boss? Uh, th that'd be Matt. <laughs> I would never say that. I'm always like, guys, you all did such a good job, even though we didn't get all the work done. Let's get ice cream. <laughs> but the truth is, we always have way more than we can use. Oddly enough, uh, and we cut probably 75 percent of what we approve. And then uh, what's left is as funny as it gets. <laughs> uh, so it, it's actually not a problem coming up with enough stuff. All right. Yeah, yeah. next question. Oh, this guy has a mic too. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm like. I think um, they're handing them out. I don't think so. No, I'm pretty sure they're giving them out like wristbands. They have a vending machine downstairs for $5 to get a mic. But Perfect. Sweet. That's a cheap mic. <laughs> Good I've, sounding quality. I've priced the technology. And so in reference to your Justin Bieber uh, <laughs> comment there. Um, I like that this guy's hitting, with, hitting us with the Bieber question. <laughs> You're, you are my wife's Justin Bieber, and I got these panel tickets because she likes me, you. Me. Yeah, you. You know I'm not a pop star. No, I know. <laughs> so I don't Nor know. a wife beater wearing, like, speeding car driver. No, you're a really cool dude that makes really cool production in television and, and uh, actors. That was unsolicited. Is that a plant? <laughs> Do I have brown on my nose? <laughs> um, anyway, I was wondering, and, and, and you could say no, but can my wife give you a hug? <laughs> Are we going to start this panel off with hugs? Where's your wife? Right here. All right, come here. Yeah, right, get the hug. But somebody... <laughs> what free hug? Somebody should ask another question while we're making this happen. Line up the hugs. <laughs> Oh, Cherish. Aww. If you'd have told me when I was a teenager trying to get dates <laughs> that at some point in my life, husbands would be like, dude, I it would mean a lot to me if you would hug my wife. <laughs> I, would have, I would have not believed that was a vocation opportunity. <laughs> All right, on to the next one. Thanks, man. Where are we? Where are we? Hey, right here. Okay. How you doing? Uh, so this is my third Nerd HQ uh, Robot Chickens Ooh. buddy panel. If we're and, repetitive, uh, please let us know. Uh, it always we is, but that's fine. We've got a limited repertoire, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so as a, as a fan of these things, I, I have a very uh, logistical question. Uh, do you have any equipment cases large enough to fit me and my friends to get into your Comic-Con panel so we can see Bob's Burgers and Archer afterward? Uh, this is, so this is the sad reality of Comic-Con. Over the years, it has become such a thing that it is, like, literally impossible to do everything, to do everything. And the, the truth is, no, we didn't bring any equipment <laughs> cases. And, and even more to the point, the Hilton Bayfront security team is crack, and they will <laughs> tackle anyone that doesn't have the proper accreditations. That said... That said <laughs> If I saw you there and you were like, what's up, dude? It's me in the Wheatley shirt from Nerd HQ. I would be like, oh, yeah, that guy. Sure. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Right on. Uh, I do have one more quick follow-up. Is, is, is uh, it a hug? Uh, no, no. I mean, I'd love one, sure. Uh, but uh, Fuck, dude, bring it in. All right, let's go. <laughs> what are you doing? Wasn't there a monk that went around the world curing people with hugs? <laughs> I'm sorry, who? Jesus. No, 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 no. Right over, right over here. I'm not a builder, man. What, what was the name of that monk? <laughs> what was the name of that dude that was like turning water into wine? That guy seemed cool. Hi, guys. Okay, so since this is Nerd HQ, I'm wondering if there is a particular nerdy character that you may have developed over the years that you most relate to? Bitch pudding. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, like, for example, for me, 
uh, Seth playing Lyle in the Italian job, the moment when you will never catch the real Napster goes across the screens. I mean, that was like one of the defining moments. So I didn't know you had any. Uh, I love that like character. That. I mean, that was like such a treat to get to play that part in such a fun movie with all those people and get to do awesome stuff like driving speedboats and steal gold. So, you know, I just lucked into that backwards and was excited <laughs> that, that they didn't kick me out. So was that a question? Um, what character do you most relate to that you play? Well, s silly enough, like our nerd on Robot Chicken is kind of the amalgam amalgamation of all of our most deep fanboy id. Like, that character sort of gets to say all points of view of the, the, the common man in line at, at Comic-Con, you know? And so that's the fun of it. We get to express ourselves uh, through him. But he's also endlessly optimistic and will passionately enjoy things, even though he's the first to say, I don't know if this is all that cool, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that guy a lot. Tom, your favorite well, probably Beastman? I was going to say, his friend, uh, who we call Gyro Robo for reasons that are, take too long to explain, uh, he's like the nerd you're afraid of turning into. Like, I feel like our robot chicken nerd is like the best elements. Of Somewhat well-adjusted, made out with Scarlett Johansson. Like, he's, he's doing all right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what question, Root, what's the name of the nerd that's kind of mean? Oh, are you talking about Munson? Munson? Yeah, yeah. Munson's not Munson. a nerd. He's, He's the anti-nerd. Bully. He's played by Breckin Meyer, who is, there's little difference between the two of them. <laughs> yeah, very, very similar. I think Munson's got a deeper tone. I feel like that, that humping robot and myself have just a lot in common. <laughs> hey, if you haven't been to Dish the Adult Swim Funhouse, by the way, there's like an actual humping robot there. Like a full-scale humping, humping robot. Like, I'm not making that up. It's actually, like, steam-powered and just humping something. <laughs> the Adult Swim Funhouse has a real humping robot. That's not a lie. That is an invitation to go there. <laughs> Where are we going? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh, yes, you with the microphone. Right there. Um, this is my first Nerd HQ and my first panel, so... Oh! Wow. Wow. All right. Welcome to Comic-Con. My daughter, Eva, over there. Oh, hey, the what's up? Row. Uh, got me hooked on Robot Chicken. Uh oh. <laughs> so thank you, Eva. There's hotlines and treatment centers. Thank you. My question is: Is there any subject you just won't go there? Because from what I've seen. <laughs> um, you know, I, I mean, we're we're um, this we're, no. we're well, probably <laughs> no. But but we're on we're we're for instance, like none of us are all that shy, and we just try and take an approach that has less of a position than just the ability to make people think or laugh. Like, I, I, I did this Peanuts panel yesterday, and we talked a lot about Charles Schultz and just the way he would mention topics like communism or feminism and mention them in a way, or, or, or a prayer in schools and things like that, and mention them in such a way that didn't even take a position, but that both sides of the argument were excited to tout as their, you know, validation. And I, that's, that's more <laughs> what we try to do when we talk about topics that could be hot button is, let you guys think about it. You know, we don't want to tell you what to think. We just want to say, hey, this is funny. What do you think about that? You know what I mean? From a writing standpoint, um, there's been some, uh, sometimes current events will wipe out one of our sketches. Like, uh, our other head writer, Doug Goldstein, was really obsessed with this idea that down in New Orleans, because they're below the water table, sometimes coffins pop out of the graveyards and float away. And he wrote this whole sketch about like, surfing zombies. Yeah, surfing, <laughs> surfing these coffins down w these water-strewn streets, and uh, I don't. I think it was actually going to go like to script. Oh, it was going to script. And yeah, we all been yeah. like, yeah, this is marginal. We can push and, it, and put then, this through. You know, there were certain events. Right. And then hurricane. You guys remember Katrina that hurricane? Happened. That hurricane that wiped out most of New Orleans. <laughs> that went literally away. all the coffins came up out of the graveyard and started floating away. We were like, ooh, this is. Yeah. And timely. so I mean, we didn't need it like. Mike Lazo to tell us, don't do it. We were just like, we're going to bury this. Like, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on, you set that up. That's that why he's the head writer, guys. <laughs> yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> oh, Buffy? Yeah, we love Buffy. Oh, is the, this guy, no one's ever really, he's a great uh, architect of TV, but he's never gotten to work again. Bummer. Yeah, yeah. 
I think he does voiceover work for us. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. We we throw him a bone every once in a while. <laughs> You're welcome. Who has the microphone? Over there. Oh, what's up, Lantern? Well, it was my first Comic Con. I thought I'd put a bit of effort in, really. Yes, well and done. All the characters are that different. Do you all kind of confer on each character, or do you all kind of like each character? Like, this is mine. Or well, like, who, who plays what? Or like, who? Do you each write each one individually? Like oh, you, no, no, no. You know, uh, no. Typically, typically, each writer will pitch sketches, and if the if if they're the one that like drives it, they'll do, do the actual scene writing. But it's all pitches in the first stages. Everyone's just like volume pitching for the first like two th weeks. two, two yeah, to three weeks week. of four to five weeks of writing is like all pitching, and then we we collect everything and say, okay, these are the sketches that we're gonna pursue, and then we'll hand them out to the writers, each one can either write the one that they wrote or if they have a take on it, they have better dialogue, and then we'll, we'll room everything so that everybody kind of weighs in to punch up or make cuts and things like that. It's a long process, but we do a bunch at a time, and that's, that's what keeps us so efficient. Did that answer that? Yeah. All right. What's up? Hi. Uh, I've done several stop motion stuff uh, as well, not anything like what you guys do, but this, I don't think the general audience realizes like, how much time uh, goes into all of that, and you have to be passionate about it. That seems to be flowing through what you guys do. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about that? Of like, basically, what gets you through this? You, yeah, you gotta you, love whatever you, it is yeah, that I you're mean, making. These guys, these guys started it as animators. Both these guys have sat behind the curtain for tens and twenty of hours and just moved something incrementally, frame by frame. A day. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you, you know, we do stop motion because we love it. It's not easy. It's just like a passion that we just. You know, we have to do it. We got to put our hands in those puppets and move them around a little bit. But, Tanner, I mean, what do you think? You know, that's that's about what it is, right? How did you, you take something so pure and make it sound so dirty? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an Very art slowly. form. That, yeah, it's an art form that takes a lot of passion and it'll weed animators out really quickly because it does take a ton of patience, a ton of focus. You're behind a dark curtain for. 10 hours a day to get like eight seconds of animation. Ooh, eight seconds, you're fast, buddy. That's pretty good. Thanks, that's pretty good uh, in my heyday. <laughs> but I mean, physically, it can wreck a body. I mean, look yeah, at Mark's my, body. It's my body is wrecked. I am a retired animator. Your body is definitely... It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, yeah. Yeah, so. after, after like seven years, eight years, it's like playing in the NFL, honestly. It just... Yeah. It's like a running back. You get past <laughs> yeah. 30, just your knees give out, and that's it. Yeah, imagine standing by yourself alone for Don't give it hours. credence. We're, we're being silly. I know. No, no, it's, it's a ton no, it's, of fun. It's super rewarding. And we've actually got live animation happening here at Nerd HQ. Uh, check it out, the Stupid yeah, Buddy Studios. Yeah, if you guys studios. haven't been out there, there's a whole display of real sets that we've used, real puppets that we've used. And one of see. our animators, Dylan, is actually animating all day and having people come in and kind of... Go, like, go, go pick his brain. Go hang yeah. out with him. He's Yeah, go he's heckle hilarious. him. He will, he will oh, go heckle him. Go make fun of him. And our studio mascot, a giant robot Winnebago. Yeah, Stupbot is cruising around, so be sure to get a picture. Yeah, be on the lookout for Stupbot. Eight feet tall, glowing eyes, hard to miss. Feel free to social any photos you take with our giant robot. Does he give out hugs? I don't know if he can do that. I don't he even think he can. You. He can't even bring his arms together. He gives out hugs? You guys got oh some? Oh, my God, that's amazing. Uh, oh, I like Stupbot. <laughs> We should probably answer more questions we're now that we're, we're getting here. into the 17 minute I'm mark. Looking for the. Uh, yep, there it is. Yeah, hey, uh, just want to say I love the Sam Elliott white wine uh, <laughs> item. That was that was what? awesome. Yeah. How did that like that was pie in the sky? Our, one of our writers, Mayhar, wrote this gag, and he said, "This is you know, this is standing on the edge of a boat with your sweater tied tight, polo, just enjoying yourself." And he wrote the the it's all about how white wine. Well, actually, the it's even weirder than that. It's a series of commercials that talk about first. It's like your buddy coming out to you, your best friend, and it's like, oh, you don't want to make him feel uncomfortable. You want to like pop open a bottle of white wine and say, I'm cool with you, man. We're still friends. And, uh, and then the tagline was, white wine. Fuck yeah. And <laughs> the second one is all about like, hey, you know, you're going to hang out with your buddy even though he's, he's gay, you're cool with that, even though you'll probably never like go to a gay bar with him or whatever, you know, kick back, enjoy a nice bottle of white wine. Fuck yeah. And then the, the third one is uh, you're jealous of your buddy's free lifestyle and maybe you feel you got tied down too soon and wind up out of the club and um what was it it was like just because <laughs> giving is not a... no 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 no. it was uh it was uh it, just, just because you decide that uh receiving oral isn't the same as cheating 
receiving oral doesn't make you gay, doesn't, but it does it mean you cheated on your wife. <laughs> Time to drown those sorrows in a big bottle of white wine. And so Mayhar Pie in the Sky was like uh, a Sam Elliott type in the, in the parenthetical. And our, uh, our casting agent was just like, let's try and get him. And he, and he said yes. Yeah. And, even, and then he got even, nominated for crazy, a fucking Emmy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So there, so there, you know, Sam Elliott's up there with, like, Hank Azaria and, like, or Dan Castellaneta. Sam Elliott said it was his first Emmy nomination. <laughs> so we're at the Emmy wine. party with Sam, and none of us won that year, but we were still like, fuck yeah! <laughs> so you have a question, though, I'm sure. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> so, so, so the question is, you got, you know, him, which actor, you know, alive or dead, would you guys really love to have come on the show if you could have anyone? I say it every time, Harrison Ford. That's the one I'm going for. We are always this close, and then always something happens where he can't do it. Like he breaks his leg or something. I want to, I actually, I'd really love to get George Clooney on, because he's so funny and such a brilliantly talented guy. Every time I was like, God, that guy is so fucking cool. Next to him, he's just so awesome. So I'd love to get him on. You guys got any questions? Uh, yeah, mine's easy. Dave Coulier. You've already had him. Dave but Coulier's I wasn't cool. there. I missed it. I wanted to meet him. So... I'm still hoping. You gotta step out of your, your ivory tower every once in a while. Does that mean I gotta pick like the Olsen twins or John Stamos or something? <laughs> Say whoever yeah, you want. Let's get the full, the full cast of Full House in, please. So, the, the question was any actor alive or dead? Yeah. Olivier. Uh, <laughs> so we got a Coulier. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, Humphrey Bogart, Orson Welles. And, oh, that's good, yeah. <laughs> Eyebrow. I guess Coulier. <laughs> uh, do you want to do one more and then? Yes, know? one more question. Who's got the question? Hello. Oh, that guy. Hi. Hey, man. Uh, brilliant job in the NASA panel yesterday, by the way. Oh, thanks. Oh, my gosh. NASA. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Guys, I got to meet Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> yeah, when's he going to be on Robot Chicken? Questions. That's a good question. We have yeah, Buzz on Robot Chicken. Is he Screen Actors Guild? <laughs> yeah, dude. He met Optimus Prime. <laughs> yeah. But... Now, Seth MacFarlane has had so much fun at Robot Chicken's expense, and at your expense. When is Seth MacFarlane going to come on Robot Chicken, and Chris is just going to give Peter a beatdown? I don't know that we would do. I don't know that we would do that same gag. The way that gag at uh, the end of Star Wars got born was because me and MacFarlane were d making dueling Star Wars at the same time. Like we were making our Robot Star Wars at the same time that they were doing Family Guy. So we had conversations between our writers' rooms about like, Hey, are you guys doing a trash compactor joke? What does it look like? Oh, it's just something with a couch. It's just a couch and a pizza thing. So we can do the, okay, cool. And we just, we made sure that we weren't stepping on each other's toes ever, but then we beat them to air because uh, 2D animation is so fucking arduous and takes so much longer than stop motion. Insane yeah, stop motion is so easy, it's super easy. <laughs> it's not, it's not. It is not easier, but we were, our production cycle was faster than theirs, so we beat them to air. And by the time they had their whole thing cut, they called me in to do this pickup that was Peter and Chris arguing about Seth Green and Robot Chicken. And, and I was like, oh, I can't believe you're doing this. He's like, well, what are we supposed to do? Pretend this didn't happen? Come on, let's have fun. <laughs> and so for us, it was just silly. Like, McFarlane was in our original webisodes. I've known him since 97, something like that. So, you know, this whole ride has been crazy. Um, and we can take the piss out of each other because... Everybody's friends, and I think I think the audience finds it funny, right? You guys find it funny? So, but he's a he's a good friend of the show. Plays Santa Claus in all our Christmas. He, I always say he's Santa Claus. He's our emperor. He's our lion-o. and he's our lion-o. <laughs> that is that's McFarlane. He's so fucking talented. What are you gonna do? You gotta get him on the show. How do you want to do this? Should we? Hey, show do you guys know? Uh, we, show yeah, let's show. Let's show. Okay. Do you guys know anything about Team Unicorn? For those of you that don't know, Team Unicorn is the brainchild of some pretty awesome people, uh, Claire Grant and uh, Riley Vanderbilt and uh, Mylon Sarley, and they are, we're making a cartoon with them. Yeah, let's just show them the clip, because honestly, it'll, it'll explain okay. more. So, uh, let's dim the lights. So this is a pilot that we're doing for Adult Swim right now. You guys are the very first to see. You're literally the first people to see it. Oh, exclusive. Brace yourself, and let's roll the Team Unicorn clip. Miss.
Sisters of Time. Summon Tawn and Evan. Jade, Goddess of War. Get going down. Fuchsia, Psionic Siren. Why are you hitting yourself? And Cobalt, the bookish one. Their mission to battle foul play with cosplay. They are Team Unicorn. Momo Mechacorn, go, go, go. are these dick traps going to turn into? Oh, oh, Ponycorns go! The Team Unicorn Adventure Show! Oh, oh, Ponycorns go! Wow, you guys are all kind of hot! For nerdy dweebs and store-bought costumes! Oh. Happiness, yes, you don't know! You guys, does this look store-bought? Team Unicorn Go! So that said, we want to bring out a couple of people. Let's bring out some of the stars of Team Unicorn. Uh, Claire Grant. <laughs> Riley of Vanderbilt. Riley. Mylon Sarley. And everybody's favorite chummy chair of Mr. Alan fucking Tudyk. <laughs> What do you want to say? What do we want to say? What do you guys want to say? Does anybody have any questions about the show? We can answer. Hi. Look at all those cameras. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> this panel just They're got all way better. You, Matt. <laughs> they are not pointing in this direction at no. all. <laughs> we can pretty much say or do anything we want. <laughs> um, what do you think? Should we take questions about yeah, the show? Does anybody have questions about the show? Anything specific about Team Unicorn? Like two or three that we can do. I see a hand right here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good question. Um, Etsy, actually, there's a... From Etsy. <laughs> this is my second one. I broke my first one. Oh, that's black milk clothing. Black milk, yeah. Yeah. A little messy. Yes, you in the green. Go for it. So we're in production on this pilot right now, and then what will happen is, as it is finished, Adult Swim will test it. And if people like it... We will make more of them. But I like it. we're really excited about it, and we think it's pretty awesome. So we're super anxious to make more. Um, Jane Lynch is in it. She plays kind of the Gargamel to the girls' team. <laughs> She's our Skeletor. The evil dark pooba. Yes, sir, you with the, with, the, with the hand up. It's a quarter-hour show. It's sort of a format. It's like... It's like all the Saturday morning shows that we grew up loving, you know. So there's a, there's a, a live action wraparound where the girls are in costumes giving out lessons with like a goat and a bunch of kids in a park and talking about bullying and, you know, T. combating dyslexia. What's that? It's very Mr. T. It's super Mr. T, you know what I mean? And so then it's a full cartoon and then it's a wraparound like, well, we learned a great lesson today, didn't we, guys? Remember, don't take candy from strangers unless it's really good candy and you can run faster than them. So maybe kids shouldn't do that stuff at home. This is not a kid's show. This is going to be on Adult Swim. <laughs> yes, you in the front with the red shirt. Uh, uh, clearly a brony. I'm selling you out, man. That's probably not true. <laughs> the, the question is, were, were there ever other animals that you uh, uh, thought you could be, or was it always unicorns? Always unicorns. Yeah, the, uni the unicorn, well, the show your, was more about born your brand. From... Yeah, yeah. Do you talk? Um, we've actually been making uh, Team Unicorn videos for the internet for a few years now. And, and each, each video has uh, sort of been a love letter to different geek genres that we love and are each passionate about. And so this is our um, Saturday morning cartoon show. And it's like all of our favorite shows growing up like rolled into one. <laughs> no, that princess sketch was uh, one of our writers, uh, Rachel Bloom, who's, uh, she's actually doing her own show for, is it Showtime? Showtime. Showtime. Yeah. She wrote, but she wrote on the Team Unicorn pilot. Yep. Wait, but I want to ask multiple voiceover award-winning Alan Tudyk a question. 
Because I... Because I actually got to hand you your Annie Award for uh, Wreck-It yeah. Ralph, which was like one of the coolest things that I that I ever got to do. Not to take away from your moment, which was so fucking awesome, because you played the greatest part and deserved that award. Yeah, it was better giving than receiving. Thank you. No, that was no, yeah, that yeah. was less that was less of a question than a comment. I apologize. So uh, playing Chummy Cherub, who is the assigned minion to the hapless Dark Pooba, like right. most cherubs get to do good things, like help people fall in love or adorn churches, and Chummy is inexorably intertwined with this terrible underachiever. What, what was that experience like? Uh, it was fantastic, man. Uh, what was the line that I said in the trailer there? How many fucking things are these dick traps going to turn into? <laughs> that's a pull quote. That's, that's nice. That, I mean, that, that really sums up the experience. I, I have... <laughs> It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. The voice is very similar to that of Duke Wesselton from Frozen, uh, which it's really great to get a chance to really stretch into that. Uh, it's really who the Duke was at his soul, was this kind of guy, and uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to get to play. If we get to make more of these, we have a lot of goals for Chummy. Like, I really want to explore his being bound to her and how sad that is, and him, like, maybe even attempting his own kind of subterfuge and trying to get his way into Team Unicorn. Yeah, he's definitely the smartest person in the entire show. <laughs> he, he knows what's really going on. Uh, the rest of us are just, he's like, what are, what are you doing? Yeah, he hates does, us. Does he still uh, come and go with a poof? Oh, yeah, yes, a poof. it's the best. Poof! <laughs> that's, what, that's the sound instead of poof. It goes poof! <laughs> poof! Poof! We, we ran out of money for sound effects on the show. <laughs> oh, you know what we didn't mention is uh, the one of the stars of the show, Billy, the boy with the red hat, who's kind of an Ash Ketchum, who has the mythical uh, artifact that summons Team Unicorn, uh, played by Tara Strong. She's pretty cool. No big deal. Just a VO legend. Whatever. I saw a I don't question know, bubbles right here. Powerpuff Girl. Yeah, for Team Unicorn. Whoa! Did, is that a vest that you made out of the bag? Yes, sir. Killer. Yeah. Bravo. See the back. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Representing Arrow. I did watch the uh, early Team Unicorn YouTube videos uh, when they came out. Uh, noticed last year. Uh, I was curious about the change in people and Michelle Boyd um, being replaced. Is how did that come about? Was that a contracting issue, scheduling? Um. No, it was just a. Uh, it was just a. We had a. She was just um, not as good a fit for the role on, on, this, on this show as Allison was. And she's really busy doing her own thing. She's got a new series out, Geek Cred, and we're, we were really lucky to get Allison. Did you guys know Allison Hayslip? <laughs> so Allison Hayslip is playing the blue unicorn on the cartoon. Any last Any questions? questions? I'm seeing this clicker go down. So we have about two minutes. Two minutes, speed round! Speed round, yes. Total speed round. We don't even need the mics after this mic. Do it! I have a question for you. Oh, Let's do the it. robot chicken people. Are you going to bring back Scarecrow for another DC Comics? Yes. I live for him. Yes. Oh, thanks. And I'm sure glad you said that, that. because Seth hates that character. No, 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 I don't hate that character. <laughs> I was just really surprised that people liked it, because it was such a throwaway in the, in the first thing. And then in the writer's room over the second special, they made Scarecrow like a really big character. And I was like, oh, we should recast this with somebody like good and famous, and they were like, no, you should just do it. And so I was like, oh. <laughs> I remember it as, stop writing so much Scarecrow. <laughs> That's all, because it, it was me, because we got, like, Clancy Brown to play Gorilla Grodd, and, you know, it was like, it was like a big, it was a big deal. So anyway, right, well, speed round, yeah, we'll speed, speed round. round. Okay. Uh, good question. <laughs> Town and I are both directing... A project for Sony soon. It's called Super Bago, and keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> you in the yes. red hat. Yes. Crossover? Eventually. We will probably sooner see a Team Unicorn Voltron crossover. Because <laughs> I'll bet they date on the side. Yes, you. <laughs> you know, I keep, I keep hinting that eventually we'll make a 90-minute... <laughs> Like a feature we'll like Titan. We'll keep, maybe. We'll keep, we'll keep pushing maybe. for that. We want that. We still want that. Eventually. Yes. Yes, with the fingers. I don't know if you remember. Yes, with the fingers. 
Oh, the was that the Order of the Phoenix? Yes. 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 Awesome party. Yes. <laughs> I mean, he's talking to you right now. <laughs> I finally why, found why you. Why do you think he's here? <laughs> the truth. Busted. Yeah. Oh, well, that was well, we both had fun at that party, didn't we? <laughs> I'm weird like that. I'm a, I'm a creep on your friends. Straight in the right back. On. Happy Comic Con. All the way back there. Right after oh, this, walk down here. He'll do it very quickly. Wait, that's, that one. that's not what you mean. You mean come down here now while okay. we wrap this up so that it doesn't turn into a male Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Here, come, if you have it, handy. All right, I think, our, I think our time is up. So one last one as, as you're coming down. One last question. As we quickly make our way to the front. <laughs> what? We do? Oh. Oh, all right. Oh, the, the man, the relax. Says come on, man. A couple I'm looking of at the numbers. They want to be here. I'm looking at the numbers. All right, we're still in the speed round. Yes, in the... In, in the Joker, hell yes. He's got a microphone. Um. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, he, yeah. Look. Uh oh, then it turns uh, turn into that. Uh, but, I will, but I will salute you, and I'll get you home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys kill each other, when you guys killed yourselves in um, Robot Chicken, did you guys lose a bet? Did we lose a bet? <laughs> yeah, like, why do you guys kill each other? <laughs> you, know, you know we hate ourselves, right? <laughs> <laughs> Self flagellation, you know, that's how you. <laughs> Uh, uh, wait, yeah. listen. First off, uh, Raleigh, it's great meeting you yesterday. I'm glad you liked the art. I have it for them. And um, also, uh, you can do more Saber sequels. Yes. <laughs> What's the tougher? Uh, Who's got a marker? I don't see. By the way, talking. over here to your left. Oh, over there. Anybody Standing. in staff have a sharpie? Okay. Um, what's the toughest? What? Which episodes are our toughest to produce? Like overall, like from beginning to end. Robot Chicken or now this Team Unicorn? And then yeah. what's, what's the biggest difference between the two? Very different types. The, the, I mean, Robot Chicken is all done in-house, you know, where you have animators moving things like a little bit at a time. Um, the difference with uh, Team Unicorn is everything's sent overseas. You know, we do all the storyboards, we rough everything out, and then we ship it. And then and we hook when it comes back from overseas, is it always perfect? No, it is not always <laughs> perfect. There's a lot of going back and forth, that, and you, a lot of communication that you have to figure out when you don't speak the same language, which makes life very interesting. Right over here. Wait, just to give you an idea, the live action part of the Team Unicorn, which will amount to about 62 seconds of the show, took a single day to shoot. We are still working on the animation. It's been months, months and months. Right there. Oh, am I doing Tucker and uh, Dale versus Evil 2? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> when it's going, when sure. it's being written and... Yes. Speed round! Yeah. Oh, you mean like go actually on a trip? <clears throat> oh, the photo booth. Yeah. <laughs> I think we did. <laughs> but yeah. Is it scheduled? Is that what you mean? I don't know. We have it on schedule. We'll work it out. We can work it out. Guys, we did a crazy thing at New York Con, which was because I think because you know about this charity, right? It's a really clean one to one. The kids that need the money actually get the whole amount of the money, and it's like two hundred and forty. Two hundred forty dollars for one hour. Three hundred and sixty-five for that. So these kids with this, you know, uh, with a facial deformity that. That causes all kinds of incredible complications. It's fixed like that, one-to-one, -one, just a single kid. You change that kid's life forever. It's a really powerful thing, so we love it. Love being a part of it. And that's what the photo booth was. It's like, donate to the charity, take a picture. We, we got nuts in New York. I remember we took yeah, we like did. 100 people oh, in New York. It was, it was nice. crazy. <laughs> but it was the speed round, too. It was like, let's try and do that. I got 45 minutes. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, if we, if we can work it out, if they have the time in their schedule, as you guys know, Comic-Con is a crazy time, and these guys are very busy. So if they I, have the time, we'll try and work it out. I'm going to need to take a question from Luke Cage over there. All right. What's up, Power Man? <laughs> Yo. Okay, quick question. Just wanted to know, uh, did you by any chance scoop up any of the Twisted Toy Theater writers or, like, designers? <laughs> yes. This is uh, former Wizard Publications uh, supervising editor Matthew Senreich. Oh, right writer. here. That was uh, uh, former co-creator, Twisted Toy Fair Theater. You, no, you but I wrote like 80 of them. And also the letters page uh, in Toy Fair, which was my favorite feature, Tom Root. 
yeah. wrote all those letters. We, so we, we, we did. We, we all, collected. We all started at, at Wizard and uh, Toy Fair Magazine. And then we got lured out to uh, Los Angeles. That was actually this one. how Matt and I met and fell in love was over Toy Fair Magazine. <laughs> and were you at Club Cosplay? Uh, yes, I was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speed round. <laughs> Yes. Um, the next round of merchandise will hopefully be tied in with the show, but um, right now we're, we have a hold on it all because <laughs> Adult Swim actually has the license for Team Unicorn, which is why we also haven't done any more web videos in such a long time. It's like all of our energy is focused on this one thing. I know we have we have you have no idea Although, how many ideas we have. Oh, but you know what? We've been designing clothes for We Love Fine like awesome geek apparel of all of your favorite brands and we're about to be pushing it all out really soon and we are we are actually doing a nail line with espionage so it uni unicorn inspired and, nail line and also i don't know if you have the the tattoos do we have any of those right here i mean oh yeah I, mean, I brought a whole bunch of team unicorn free tattoos if if you guys want want those like this like this kind of thing i'm, I'm gonna go get them <laughs> right. oh yours is real She'll be right back. Bye. <laughs> See you guys. All right, Let's next put one. Put them to work. Right here. Uh, when is the uh, best friends gonna go to, to air? Best friends? Uh, the the pilot you showed last year. Best friend all stars. Oh, friendship yeah. all stars. It's oh. online. If you go to lstudio.com. Um, There's a whole the, series of them. Yeah, There's like have ten episodes that are up um, and going. So yeah. So uh, the last one I think was just released <laughs> like a month ago. Yep. Uh, Speed round. Haven't you been reading the comics? <laughs> you should catch up. It's all, it's all in the books. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it. This is Comic-Con. If you could write it. I would never dare. Do you realize, like, some of the best things that have ever come out of my mouth were written by the people that wrote that show? <laughs> so, I'm not going to say, I had my role very specifically. They were like, hey, look pretty and act well. That was all I tried to do. That's all I tried to do. And, and make it look like I could play the guitar. That was it. <laughs> uh, the the uh, tattoos the tattoos are uh, being held by the volunteers as you guys oh. watch out of the panel. If you'd like a tattoo, then grab one from that. <laughs> and, and we got time for one you, more question. You apply one more them question. with warm one more water. Question. Yes, with the red hair. So this is oh sorry. Um, I have in this room are my two favorite space pilots ever, Joker and Wash. Is there any way we could? <laughs> Is there any way we could ever see a fight maybe between the Normandy and uh, Serenity we, on Robot we Chicken? Just, we just went from having like a really love-filled hug to like, fight, fight. <laughs> it's a silly. We, we would be running the same, camp, same campaign, I'm sure. We would like flank each other and make sure that all of our fleets got home. If Wash wasn't dead. <laughs> Look, we've already... Still funny. It's guys, still funny. we've... We've already established that there are infinite uh, instances of the universe. So yep. you know, just because he died there doesn't mean there's like se doesn't mean there's not several hundred thousand instances where he's like, woo, he's playing <laughs> <Miss> skee ball. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, yeah. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, wait, we have a single clip. Oh, and that'll be the end of it. Oh, you do. We have one clip, guys, which is a trailer for the upcoming this, robot. This is for our season finale. Uh, we decided to do something a little bit different. Do you guys know anything about the mythology of the show? Like the quasi-mythology of the scientist and the chicken? And in our hundredth episode, the scientist kidnapped the chicken's girlfriend. And everybody knows all about that? Okay. This is the next chapter in the ongoing saga. Oh. So let's lower Another the lights debut. and roll, <laughs> roll the clip. Ha <laughs> ha! 
to something with that cybernetic chicken, but you always lacked a certain vision. <laughs> So, no big deal, but the scientist's son was played by none other than Zachary Levi. <laughs> was that the first time you got to That was the first time I've seen it. I was like, I think that was me. We had a, <laughs> we had a whole conversation about that guy looking sort of like the, the kid that steals Pee-wee's bike in Pee-wee's Big Adventure, and then he wound up becoming like a cross between that and um, Luke Wilson in uh, uh, Royal Tenenbaums. So... <laughs> He's really skinny, but he's got muscular thighs and like a tennis outfit. <laughs> like a, it's, like a, it's my dream character, so thank you. You've done <laughs> well, it for me. Well, like an overprivileged kid who now feels he's going to do better than his dad. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a hand for all of our panels. We gotta go. We hope to see you at more panels. We'll see you up on the concourse. We love you and God bless you and have a great weekend. Bye. All right, guys, stay seated. We'll start with the wings. Go ahead. The wings, actually, both sides. Go ahead. Up and out. Oh, the wings. The wings. Just the wings. Everybody else. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> but rows 9 and 10 on this side, you're fine. Rows 9 and 10 on that side, go ahead. Because you have the big pole. So go ahead. One, just help yourselves out. Row one, go ahead. Stand up. We're going to file out like Disneyland style. Thank you guys so much for coming. Have a great day. Hopefully we see you round up in the concourse. You guys all have the, the bracelet.